Sydney Sweeney's recent romantic comedy Anyone, but you surprised everyone by grossing $220 million worldwide despite mixed reviews. Sony is eager to keep rolling out projects with her, sources say. Jane Goldman and Honey Ross are in talks to write a new Barbarella movie starring Sweeney, with Edgar Wright directing. Since Sweeney has a busy schedule, and Wright is deep in prep on his The Running Man reboot with Glenn Powell, this won't be the next project for either of them, but it's definitely on the horizon. Bringing in Goldman and Ross to write Barbarella shows Sony is serious about getting this movie right. They're aiming for a big franchise with everyone involved. Goldman's got a track record with major hits like the X-Men reboots with James McAvoy and Michael Fassbender, plus The Kingsman, The Secret Service with Matthew Vaughn. Wright, who's been interested in Barbarella for a while, even met with Sweeney when the project first came up, though he's only loosely committed to directing. Sony and Wright go way back thanks to Baby Driver, and the vibe they're aiming for with Sweeney fits his fun, visually creative style. Details on the Barbarella film are still pretty scarce. But writer Blake Northcott, who's currently working on a new Barbarella comic series, recently shared a bit more about the movie. She hinted at how this upcoming adaptation might align with the comic books she's developing, giving fans a little more insight into what to expect. I can't picture anyone else but Sydney playing this role. She's proven that she can be dramatic, but I don't think many people realized how funny she was until anyone but you was a huge worldwide hit. Northcott told comicbook.com, referencing the 2023 Sony rom-com that Sweeney starred in. She's the perfect Barbarella, and while I'm writing the series, Sydney is always my template now, just like Ryan Reynolds has become the inspiration for the Deadpool comics in many ways, or how Robert Downey Jr. embodies Iron Man. Once you envision Sydney in that role, you can't unsee it. When asked about the plot of the film, Northcott added, not sure how much I could say about the screenplay for the film, or what material it could be based on, but there's definitely a possibility for synergy once we get further downstream. If the plot of the film ends up being based around Barb and Vicks having to fight their way off Planet V, then you have your answer. Whoever ends up writing the Barbarella film, I'm sure they'll do an amazing job. The original Barbarella movie, inspired by Jean-Claude Forrest comics, came out in 1968 and starred Jane Fonda as the title character. The storyline is a wild one set in an unspecified future. Barbarella, a space adventurer, is sent by Earth's president to track down Duran Duran in the Toddy system. Duran invented the Patronic Ray, a laser-powered weapon that Earth fears could cause mass destruction. Barbarella crashes land on the 16th planet of Teddy and is captured by two children who knock her out and drag her to a wrecked spaceship. There, they unleash mechanical dolls with razor-sharp teeth on her but she's saved by Mark Hand, an ice patrolman who rounds up wayward kids. When she offers to repay him, he proposes they make love, which confuses Barbarella, since on Earth intimacy now involves taking pills to reach orgasm without physical contact. Mark convinces her to try it the old-fashioned way, and she ends up enjoying it, though she admits she now gets why Earth considers traditional lovemaking a primitive distraction. Barbarella leaves the planet, and ends up crashing into a labyrinth full of exiles cast out from the city of Sioux. There, she meets Pigar, a blind angel who's lost the will to fly. Pigar introduces her to Professor Ping, who agrees to help fix her spaceship. To thank Pigar, Barbarella restores his will to fly by getting intimate with him, and he then carries her to Sioux, a chaotic city filled with violence and decadence. Once inside, they're captured by the Black Queen and her assistant. The assistant explains the Mathmos, a living energy made of liquid that feeds on evil thoughts and power, is beneath Sue, which is built right above it. Pigar is put through a mock crucifixion, and Barbarella is locked in a cage with hundreds of birds ready to attack her. She's saved by Dildano, the leader of the underground resistance, who joins her in the hunt for Durant. He even gives her an invisible key to the Black Queen's Chamber of Dreams, where she sleeps. Back in Sioux, Barbarella is quickly recaptured by the concierge, who puts her in the excessive machine, a device that's supposed to kill her through extreme pleasure. Instead, she overloads the machine, causing it to break down. Shocked, the concierge reveals himself as none other than Duran Duran. Barbarella is surprised to see how old he looks. Considering he's only 25, 
a side effect of exposure to the Mathmos. Duran plans to overthrow the Black Queen and rule Sue. So he uses Barbarella to access her Chamber of Dreams, locking her inside with the invisible key. Inside, Barbarella meets the Queen, who warns her that the Mathmos will consume anyone who enters with a companion. Meanwhile, Duran takes over Sue, just as Dildano and his rebels launch an attack. In retaliation, the Queen unleashes the Mathmos to destroy the city. Thanks to Barbarella's innocence, the Mathmos forms a bubble around her and the Queen, protecting them both and eventually ejecting them safely. They're found by Pigar, who picks them up and flies off. When Barbarella asks him why he saved the Tyrant Queen, Pigar simply responds that angels have no memory of the past. And there you have it. This plot is as random as it sounds and doesn't hold up all that well as a story. Both the original film and comics became notorious for their over-the-top use of sex appeal. Whether the new adaptation with Sidney Sweeney will take a similar approach is still unknown. As for the direction they should go with this reboot, that's up for debate, but there's no denying Barbarella was a huge cultural moment back in the day. Barbarella and another old movie from that era, Danger, Diabolic, were part of a wave of Italian film adaptations of European comics, known as Fumetti, which often highlighted mild sadomasochism and fetish styles of the late 1960s. Alongside these films, 1968 saw the release of Satanic, and similar themes appeared in Bruno Corbucci's M. Stiletto and Corrado Farina's Babiaga. Both Barbarella and Diabolic also embraced the era's retrofuturistic style, which was popular in European films like The Libertine, The Queen, and The Tenth Victim. While Barbarella might seem quaint to today's audiences, its influence has lingered in pop culture. It's often praised as an iconic representation of the 60s sex appeal, with the New York Times even calling Barbarella the most iconic sex goddess of the 60s. Its style and costumes inspired designs in The Fifth Element, where Jean-Paul Gaultier paid homage to Paco Rabanne's metallic dress worn by Jane Fonda. Well, that's it. Let me know in the comments below if you are excited to see Sidney Sweeney bring the original Barbarella to life, or do you think the reboot should take a new approach? And don't forget to subscribe for more updates on this and other exciting upcoming movies. We'll see you next time.